Next, we would like to discuss the reports feature in accounting. When you're in the accounting section, if you just click on the reports button, it will open up the reports feature or reports screen. And in here, you can uh, pull up any kind of a report you want on your accounting data. Uh, basically, we group the types of reports you can generate into three main groups. Those are these three choices in here. The first one is income and spending, meaning it's a very detailed report for all the income and all the spending, line, line by line. Income meaning deposits, spending meaning withdrawals, and it's going to give you everything line by line, transaction by transaction in the report, very detailed. And of course, you know, it depends how that report is going to look like with what details, what are going to be shown, what are going to be omitted. Of course, depends on what you select in here. You can select the accounts to include in the report and of course, omit ones that you don't want to include in that particular report. Categories as well, pays as well. You can choose to have some in that particular report, choose to omit others or have them all. And in the end, the date range of the report. You can pull up a report just for one single day uh, of today's day, let's say, or any day in history, or you can have a, a, a nice range of multiple days or weeks or months or even years. So um, the report is ultimately going to look like uh, whatever you choose from these selections in here. It's going to include data from these selections in here and then the format of the report, these three major types. The second one being uh, spending by category means it's not going to do like the first one where it's going to give you line by line, transaction by transaction in great detail. But what this one's going to do is it's going to uh, categorize those totals. It's going to group those totals by category. Uh, the third, the last choice is a format where it um, categorizes totals by pay. So it groups the totals by a category of a pay uh, rather than giving you line by line, transaction by transaction. Each line is going to be this pay, that much total, that pay, that much total, and so on and so forth. And of course, all of these are ran by these same details in here and depend on these same details that you select in here of what to include and what to exclude from the report and what date range. So why don't I go ahead and just give you a simple example in here. Let's go with the first type, income and spending, the one in greatest detail where it gives you every you know, deposit and withdrawal on the data you choose. Let's not go with all accounts. For simplicity in here, let's just go with the business account. That's what I'm going to add in the group here. And um, categories to include in the report. Let's have them all. That's fine. Pays, we can have them all. Uh, by default, it has them all in here. And uh, reports date range. I'm just going to put uh, some fictional date range in here. Um, keep in mind, we barely have any data in, in, in accounting right now. Just whatever we put together real fast for testing purposes and for showing you this. So let's go ahead and click calculate report and it's going to just compile our report. And as you can see, that's how it looks like. Great details of everything you asked for. You got the date, check numbers if applicable, pay, total, category, account ID, so you know which account it's for. So line by line, transaction by transaction, whatever fits this uh, selection that you made in here, right? Now, in contrast to that, I want you to see how the other format of a report looks like. So I'm going to run it on the same data, meaning I'm going to uh, keep these selections in here unchanged. So it runs the report on the same data. I just want you to see the difference in the format of the report if I select spending by category. So I'm going to go ahead and click on calculate report and I can see uh, now you can see that that same data gives me something that looks quite differently, which is all the balances or totals totaled up in categories by their category, by their respective category in accounting, right? And similar to that, I'll show you spending by payee. 
if I run it on the same data, I'm not going to change any of the selections in here. I'm just going to click Calculate Report. And you will see now this report, it looks like this. It gives you the totals, balances, totaled up and grouped by a payee. So every payee has its own separate total. Now, the other interesting thing about um, accounting in general is that in accounting, you can run also your customer tabs or as they're called many times customer credit or in-store credit and uh, that is when uh, you give the credit to the customer to purchase stuff and you just write them up and uh, you know keep a tab on what they owe you and then they one one day they come in and they pay off their tab and that whole basic trust system or in-store credit system uh, the way you do that uh, very easily is you create accounts in here like you create bank accounts let's go ahead and click add to create a new account and we're gonna name it uh, by the customer name let's say John Doe that's gonna be the name of account just a suggestion you know uh, so you can name the accounts by using the customer names and let's say this is the credit uh, tab for John Doe and let's say John Doe today uh, is buying something from our business that they're gonna put on tab they're gonna owe us for so let's say pay to is gonna be I don't know business as in our business category I don't know tab as in we're running a tab on them they owe us in the memo you can put in maybe briefly what they purchased just in case if uh, there's any kind of misunderstanding later when they come to pay they don't re recall making a purchase or something like that you can always give them better details by looking up this information and uh, let's say uh, for amount we're gonna put let's say they bought something for sixty four dollars and I don't know eighty two cents right so as soon as you submit this uh, this transaction now they have a negative balance of negative 6482 meaning they owe you 6482 right so now they're they're gonna keep on shopping in different days uh, on different days they're gonna rack up their bill their tab and they're gonna have a, let's say a negative balance and uh, it's time to pay it off they come to pay off their tab you're gonna run that as a deposit deposit as in they're depositing money into their tab they're putting money into their tab paying off their debt so let's say from okay from John Doe the money comes from that customer right um, category I don't know pay off uh, pay off tab you know whatever you want to call it and uh, amount let's say they'll give you two hundred dollars more than what they owe you right um, and now they have like a positive credit positive balance of one hundred and thirty five dollars and eighteen cents meaning they have $135.18 to spend before they owe you any money again and so on and so forth and in reports of course the reports are gonna work the same way as they do for all of your accounting uh, you select the account John Doe only or multiple ones if you want at once and so on and so forth and another interesting uh, thing is that uh, you can of course run this also in parallel with your accounting for your bank accounts in here you know nothing is to stop you to use accounting for both purposes at the same time you got your business accounts in here or bank accounts you got your customer accounts uh, nothing's gonna be mixed up and in reports you can of course separate whatever you want in the report so you can run uh, use accounting for both of those purposes customer credit or customer tabs and you know keeping account of your business uh, bank accounts.